Welcome to another Ruby Bandit Super Secret Fan Club Podcast. This is podcast number two for Wednesday, April 26th. So I hope everyone is doing all right. And uh, let's just get right to it. So for the channel, uh, this Sunday we do have the end of the month video being released. And right after that we're going to have the end of the month video topic vote starting so that would be on monday uh, through friday is usually when i do these things and uh, you can do that on my patreon if you guys want to vote for the next topic for the uh the end of the month video and then of course immediately after that a uh, couple days later is going to be may the 4th which is going to be which is star wars day and i'm going to be releasing another video that day I'm not sure if I'm gonna if I decided to have that be the Sunday video or if I'm gonna do another video for that Sunday. Either way, I'm kind of planning for both, but uh, we'll see how everything uh, goes from there. So as I mentioned on the first podcast, I am working on my 300th video. I'm not working on it, but it is coming up, and at the moment, I'm still lost, but. I think I've whittled it down to three choices. So we'll see what that 300th video is going to be. I do have a few things that are written out that I've been wanting to produce for a while. So it's probably going to be one of those. And these are very just... I'm really happy with the way that these were written. So I'm probably going to end up making one of those videos as my 300th video. We'll just see which one I choose. So when the day comes... You know, it'll come and that'll be it. So, you know, I, I, I'm i still one of those few people that likes to be on Facebook. I know some of you guys like to be on there too. But I feel like there's less and less people being on Facebook. And it's it's not the greatest place or anything. I know a lot of people do this a lot. But for some reason, I haven't been... I've, I've joined a few groups uh, in the past. So one of them was like the Lightning, the Lightning Collection Collectors Group. Just after being so tired of seeing all these really dumb things that people were saying and suggesting, you know, it just, it wasn't doing anything for me except for making me either roll my eyes or just, I don't know, just, uh, I, I, I was just, you know what, I'm over this. And I, and I left that group and after about a day or two of not getting irritated by these really dumb comments and stuff, well, at least from that group. I decided, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and leave a few other groups. And I know this isn't really anything major. I know a lot of people do this. And oh, I don't announce when I leave a group. Uh, for me, it, this is, you know, where I, I get some of my information from. You know, I'll, I'll sit there, I'll, I'll scroll through Facebook in the morning before I get ready to do stuff. And, oh, so-and-so came out. You know, like, oh, yeah, these figures are now out. These have been announced. So I'll get my news from you know, or at least um, I'll get something out of these groups. But I just couldn't take it with this Power Rangers group. And after a day or two of not seeing any anything that wasn't irritating from my, from that group, I basically just went through it. And it's like, if this group posts something that irritates me, I'm just going to leave the group. And I did that. And I have been so much happier. And I've also found other groups that have, um, that are a little bit more in tune with what I was looking for from those particular groups. So, for example, the, um, w once I left the Lightning Collection Collectors Group, because it, all it is is just a bunch of scalpers. It's a bunch of scalpers and people just asking for stupid ideas to be made. And I found a, um, a Super Sentai group. So it's like, you know what? I'm more into the Super Sentai anyway. And people are going to be posting about the toys. So I found one that was uh, Power Rangers merchandise. Another one that was called Super Sentai Show. And then there was one that was in Spanish. And my favorite part about the Spanish one, the one that really got me was that there was a post and it, and it was like, hey, the newest episode of so-and-so is out. 
and it's of the current Sentai. And then they posted up a link. So it's like, oh, cool. I can actually watch this show now and I can be up to date. This is great. Because in a lot of those groups, and I'm pretty sure it's probably like a legal thing or whatever. But in a lot of those groups, they're just like, don't ask where you can watch Super Sentai. Google it instead. And I'm just thinking like, well, I watch Super Sentai. I'm I'm currently watching Jetman, which is the series before Zhu Ranger. And Zhu Ranger is basically Power Rangers, the Japanese version. And I'm watching Jetman on Tubi. And Tubi is one of those uh, streaming apps, but it's free. And it, of course, it has commercials and all that. But I can watch Super Sentai on Tubi. And it's legal and everything. And you're telling me that I can't tell someone like, Oh man, Jetman is on Tubi if you want to watch Jetman. I'm not allowed to say that. That's pretty dumb. So, you know, that that's kind of what got me on that uh, Spanish group. And luckily for me, I can read and write in Spanish and speak Spanish. And I know I hear the Spanish speakers out there. I've been wanting to make, uh, do translations of a lot of my videos. That's going to take a very long time for me to do. Um, also, my Spanish is not 100%, but I, I can do it. I can do it. There's just a, there's a few words usually that I don't, um, that I don't understand how to say, like Power Rangers. Do you say it like whatever the word Rangers is in Spanish? And then, you know, poder, los, los soldados de poder, that's power soldiers. Or do you say... Los Power Rangers, you know, like it, there's there's different ways of saying these things in Spanish. Sometimes it's just like the the English way of saying it, but with a little bit of a Spanish accent in there. So, so yeah, so I it's gonna take a while to do the translations. It has been in the back of my mind for years. So maybe I just need to just stop making videos and just get right on to translating everything. I don't know. So as I was mentioning, uh, I am watching Jetman currently. I, I've been on a real uh, tokusatsu binge or whatever you call it. But I've, I've been on a real tokusatsu just, you know, I've just been wanting to watch tokusatsu so much <laughs> lately. I've been watching Jetman. I am on episode 30 as of this episode of this podcast. And it's really fun. It's a lot of fun. It's not... You know, when you think of Power Rangers, you think of the whole, like, you know, the really bad acting and these, you know, the actors just, like, the way that they move, that they the way that they deliver their lines and stuff, and it's so cheesy, and it's, yeah, it's fun, whatever, you know, if you have nostalgia for it, great, but Super Sentai, or just Tokusatsu in general, the Japanese versions of these things are so much fun like even when they're cheesy it's a lot of fun because the actors are really in on it they they really they believe in what they're doing so they're not gonna you know they their uh, their disappointment doesn't show through it, it whenever i would watch power rangers and i would see the actors doing their thing it almost felt like they were disappointed and embarrassed that this is what their job was. And when it comes to, like, for example, Super Sentai, it doesn't seem that way. And a lot of this stuff, you can see it in the 90s with anime, with a lot of the voice acting in early anime that was dubbed. Just the actors don't care. They're just like, this is another paycheck to me. I'm just going to do whatever. And a big example of this would be, well, anime and video games. But a huge example is Mega Man 8. If you've ever seen the cutscenes for Mega Man 8, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about with Dr. Wright or Dr. Light. So I've seen both names used, so I never know which one to use. I guess I'll use Dr. Light because that just sounds best. But Dr. Light, he, oh my God, he sounds like Elmer Fudd. There's there's a part where he's just like, we have to catch Dr. Wawi. And it's like, oh my god, that's that's horrible. Why would Dr. Light sound like that? Why doesn't he say we have to catch Dr. Wiley instead of Dr. Wawi? So, uh, 
It's really bad. You could tell that with a lot of the American television that was being dubbed. And even like with Power Rangers, you could see that. But when you watch Tokusatsu, when you watch the, the Japanese version of this stuff, they're in on it. It's a lot of fun. You're having fun. They're having fun. And even the parts that are just really silly and they're kind of cringe or whatever, even that stuff is a lot of fun. So I think a lot of it for me, at least, because um, I do like Japanese culture a lot. I used to be a weeb back in the early uh, 2000s. So I totally get that stuff. So when it's when they're talking about these monsters and then they're talking about like this Japanese folklore stuff, it's really, really cool. And you know that they're all in on it. And they're like, yeah, no, this is totally something that they would do in a kid's show. And they're not embarrassed or anything. The, the acting is, you know, it's not terrible. So so I've been watching Jetman. There's been death in it, which is, that's crazy. Uh, one episode that really got us. There's one where this monster uh, shoots you with these beams. And then you start turning into a crystal. So these guys, like these people, they have these crystals coming out of their skin. And there's just blood coming out. So, I mean, it's not like gushing out or anything, but it's, you see the crystal and then there's blood. So like the crystal just kind of started growing out of their bodies. And then they just turn into a giant crystal at the end, which is like anticlimactic. I, I kind of wish it would have been like a crystal skeleton or something, but no, they just turn into a giant crystal and it absorbs power or whatever. So it's episodes like that that are like, holy crap. And that that's actually one episode where it was just turn after turn after turn so the whole time you're just like wow you know this is the twist and this is what's going to happen and you're expecting it and then they do another twist on you so this whole episode was just completely all over the place and you think what's coming and it's just it's not it just changes everything and it's it's dark and whatever that that that's Jetman. i've been watching Jetman. I have the Jetman SH figure arts and I didn't get the um I didn't get the Black Ranger for that one. So the uh Jet Condor. So now I just really wish I would have picked them up when I did. If I if I did, um that was at Power Morphicon, I would have uh came home with four SH figure arts Power Rangers. I believe they were like thirty bucks, maybe forty bucks back then, so Oh, I really wish I would have picked that up because Jetman has become, at least currently, my my most favorite of the Sentai. Uh, I still haven't finished watching Die Ranger, which is the one after Zhu Ranger. But I already know that I absolutely love the Yellow Ranger on that. Where there's a scene where um, there's a tofu monster. And if I remember correctly... I believe it was one called, um, what's it called? Yeah, oh, man, I don't even remember, but it was, I don't remember what the American monster was. It was something or other horn because it was a tofu monster that had a horn on his head. Not, not like a, not like a unicorn horn, but like a, like a trumpet. And basically what this was, which they completely missed on the U S version. Of course, they just made up their own thing, but in the Japanese thing, it was supposed to be like a tofu salesman that rides a bike. And with that little horn, you know, that's how they like announce to everybody like, hey, here comes the tofu salesman. So, um, and, oh, it's Trumpet Top was his head. It was his name. So Trumpet Top was is basically a tofu man. So it's a lot, a bunch of squares, like white squares. And he has a little trumpet on his head. And that's how they would announce that, hey, the tofu guy is here to sell that. And they would sell drunken tofu, basically tofu that's like in sake. So this monster is cool because the yellow ranger, the yellow dye ranger and the tofu monster have a drinking contest. And the yellow dye ranger, his fighting style is drunken style. So it is just amazing. And this is the kind of stuff that they miss out on Power Rangers, especially because they didn't use any of the Die Rangers stuff. So, but that's a video for another thing. So I've been watching Jetman. 
Uh, we're probably going to watch U Ranger right after and then right into Die Ranger. And um, usually we watch Hell's Kitchen. We've been watching it from from season one. So I believe we're on season 13 now. So it's kind of like we're balancing those two. And then at, also I am personally watching. Uh, I'm not watching this with my fiance. I'm watching the original Kamen Rider. I've never seen it before. So again on Tubi I'm watching Kamen Rider as well. And it's getting good. I'm on episode uh, eight or nine as of the recording of this. So it's very, I mean, this is the 70s, in 1971. So this is early tokusatsu. Tokusatsu started like in the 40s with Godzilla. But uh, Kamen Rider was one of the first that was like, okay, it's on TV and this and that. So a lot of the stuff is really primitive on there where... A lot of the monsters, you could tell that there there's a human inside. The, the the costumes aren't so elaborate because this is all done on TV. So it's pretty cool. I'm really getting into it. I really like uh, the main guy, the way he, he has this really cool look to him. So very 70s uh, Japanese. And um, I don't know if anybody else has noticed this, but I always felt like in other countries, they always seem like they're 10 years behind. So when I would go to uh, Mexico, well, Mexicali, so it's still, you know, it's just crossing the border from California, but that's where some of my, fa my family's from, Mexicali. Like my parents were born there and stuff. But whenever I'd go to Mexicali, it, everything always seemed so old and dated. So everything was kind of like 10 years behind. So I don't remember when my family got internet in the U.S., my family in Mexicali still didn't have internet or they didn't have cell phones for like the longest time. And it's only now that they're coming up with all this stuff. And even the way that they say some of their stuff, like el wifi. So instead of the Wi-Fi, that's, that's how they say it. They also say um, el face, which is Facebook. So they come up with their own little slang terms for stuff. And it's like, I don't know. Everything just seems so dated. And same with Japan. I've noticed whenever I watch TV shows and stuff, their shows just are not up to par with uh, the U.S. I don't know if it's just me, but everything just kind of always seems dated. So the main guy, Takeshi Hongo, he looks like he's straight up from the, from the 60s. And even the music, even the theme, the theme song to Kamen Rider is very 60s because they use like an organ. It sounds kind of like the Doors so or uh what's it called uh like 96 tears where they use an organ on that song so it's very like that it's very 60s sci-fi it reminds me a lot of uh james bond in the 60s so you only live twice like that kind of stuff and yeah i don't know i just always noticed that but anyway common writer really good the original series i'm really digging it you have to get over the fact that it's like Oh, it's an older production, but that's fine. The story is good, you know. It's it's not any it's not any worse than Power Rangers. So I really feel like a lot of people should, you know, give it a shot. If you're into Power Rangers, people need to give the original Common Rider a shot. I know that the Common Rider in the U.S. it just hmm, I felt flat. Uh, for me personally, I didn't like it because it. The main character was an alien, and then it had that the Snarf style character, which I absolutely hate. I hated back then, and I hate it now. So to me, that's why Common Rider or Mast Rider didn't really last in the U.S. That's on my part, but I mean, I'm pretty sure it could be other things too. So yeah, watching the original Common Rider, it's great. I'm absolutely loving it, and I am also getting ready to start watching Ultraman. Because originally I wanted to do, to kind of start early in tokusatsu and then just kind of watch it progressively getting better. So in the timeline, it really should be Godzilla and then, you know, you skip a few years and then you have Ultraman, which they use, they use Godzilla suits in that original Godzilla suits in Ultraman. And that was done in the 60s. So... And you got Ultraman, and then you skip some more years, and then you have Kamen Rider, skip a few more years, and then you got yourself Go Ranger, which was the original Super Sentai group or team. 
So uh, that one, it's been a real, it's been really hard to try to find that one uh, subtitled. So uh, that's why I've just kind of okay. Jetman has been the easier one, and even then, I st I still prefer Jetman. Jetman is just so cool. I know I'm just going full circle, but yes, I I absolutely love all this kind of stuff, and I cannot wait to just start another series. Uh, I'd like to eventually get to the point where I'm up to date on Super Sentai, and that's just going to be really hard because you have people that are still doing all the subtitles and trans all the translations and everything. So it's going to be a while until I get there. The Ruby Bandit Super Secret Fan Club Podcast is brought to you by my Patreon patrons. As a Ruby Bandit Patreon patron, you get the choice of being a top-tier Jade Bandit or a mid-tier Onyx Bandit. As an Onyx Bandit, you get to vote on the end-of-the-month video. As a Jade Bandit, you get to vote on the end-of-the-month video and the end-of-the-month video topic. You can even support the channel at the $1 tier and be a Quartz Bandit. All bandits get updates and early access to my videos. The top tier Jade Bandit level costs $10 a month. The mid tier Onyx Bandit level costs $5 a month. And a Quartz Bandit tier is only a buck. What kind of bandit will you be? So, Mattel and Hasbro have decided to join forces. I guess to become Matt Bro or Hastel. So the way I found out about this was by accident. Uh, there's this guy that uh, I've, I'm friends with on Facebook, and I also follow him on YouTube. I love his channel. I love the aesthetic of his channel. It's it's really super old school and stuff. And he talks about um, vintage and also bootleg toys and some modern stuff. But uh, that would be Count Stankus. So uh, he's in the uh, Toy Room of Insanity. So I would definitely go and check him out if you guys are into uh, bootleg toys and stuff like that. Really super cool, chill guy. But anyway, he had posted up this picture of uh, three and three quarter inch Masters of the Universe figures that had um, the card back of G.I. Joe and they looked like they were G.I. Joe. They were like O-ring figures. And he was just like, hey... You know, I just saw these pictures. I wonder if this is for real. I don't know. This is weird. And I was just thinking to myself, like, no, there's no way. Why would they do this? This this is a, either a custom or an AI picture or something. And then I decided, you know what? I need to go ahead and look these up. And I looked them up. And lo and behold, Hasbro and Mattel are teaming up. What is this going to mean? Does this mean that these are real Masters of the Universe G.I. Joe O-ring figures? I mean, we, we barely got the O-ring figures for Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow. I don't think they're going to make any more. I think they're just like, let's give it a shot. And then they saw how expensive it was to make these days and decided not to do it because, you know, that's that's Hasbro. What is it that they're going to do with this team-up? You know, this, this, this historic team-up that we've been waiting for. Are we going to get G.I. Joe in Masters of Universe style? Are we going to get... G.I. Joe classified in the WWE style. Like we already are having. So no. What they're doing is. They are going to team up. Because they have two movies coming out soon. They have the latest Transformers movie coming out. And then they have the Barbie movie that's coming out. And um, I had just recently found out that my, my fiance does want to watch the Barbie movie. So it looks like that's one movie that I'm going to go watch. And I don't know. I'm, I'm going in with zero expectations. So it, it'll be fun. Just a movie to go watch and just whatever. And uh, anyway, so what they're doing is they are bringing us some historic toys. This is, a, this is history in the making. So Mattel owns Uno. And Transformers is Hasbro. So they're going to give us not transforming Uno cards. They're going to give us Uno cards with Transformers on them. Just like what they did with Masters of the Universe and Ghostbusters and all these other things. How they have all these different 
Mario Uno and stuff like that where they have their own rules. And um, I know this because my fiance collects the different types of Uno. So we have like the Office Uno. We we have like we must have like thirty different sets or however many they've made. We 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 have most of them. And there's some of them where she doesn't care about the rules, so she didn't pick them up. But anyway, we're getting Transformers Uno, and you know th- this is history in the making, guys. <laughs> and then hasbro owns monopoly so we are getting the historic the it, what everyone's been waiting for we're getting barbie monopoly just like we've gotten the i love lucy monopoly the star wars monopoly mario monopoly all the different monopolies they're going to add barbie to the monopoly because that's just what everybody's always wanted and that's what everybody thinks of when they say Yes, Mattel and Hasbro are teaming up. You know, nobody thinks that, you know, Mattel and Hasbro teaming up is going to mean Barbie She-Ra. Nobody thinks that. Or, wait, no, they can already do that. Barbie Lady J. Nobody thinks that. Nobody thinks, oh, they're going to do Barbie RC. So, you know, they're going to do that. They're also going to come up with probably the one thing that I think is kind of neat, but... I guess we'll just have to see when it comes out. But they're doing some of the um, some Transformers Hot Wheels. So, of course, we're all thinking, oh, yeah, so like an Optimus Prime and Bumblebee. And that, yes, that sounds amazing. It's not going to be the vintage stuff. I'm, I am so sure it's not going to be the vintage stuff. Because since they're both rivals, they're going to be like, well, okay, cool. Yeah, here, you can have Transformers. But only the movie stuff. Because they have to still undercut each other. So I don't think we're going to see a vintage Optimus Prime as a as a Hot Wheel. We're not going to see uh, Wheeljack or any of those guys as Hot Wheels. We're going to see those guys, but the movie versions. The Bay versions. So, yeah, really historic stuff going on here, guys. Once again, it's like, <laughs> you know, they're just falling too short on this stuff. Like, what kind of announcement is that? A, a Monopoly and an Uno set. Oh, and then and then some Hot Wheels. Throw that on in there as well. Like, this is... What's the point? <laughs> they're not, I don't think these things are going to sell very well. Maybe the Barbie Monopoly, because there are some some hardcore Barbie collectors out there. So, I could see that definitely being a thing. But the Uno stuff, I don't, I don't think... Who knows? Maybe they'll do something else later where it actually makes sense and is actually cool. But for now, that apparently that's what they're doing. Maybe they can dust off like an old, an old Jeep or something. Like, like an old Jeep mode. Uh, mold, I should say. They could dust off an old Jeep mode. Oh, why do I keep saying mode? Let me try it one more time. They can dust off an old Jeep mold for Hot Wheels and make a G.I. Joe vehicle from that. Like make the vamp or something. I don't know. <laughs> I, I almost feel like, what's the point? <laughs> so, speaking of Hasbro... So this guy, and by, by this time, most of you have already heard this. But uh, there's a guy by, uh, old. his name is Old School MTG. And uh, that, that stands for Old School Magic the Gathering uh, YouTuber. Who uh, bought some magic cards. He bought uh, March of the Machines, or March of the Machine magic cards uh, from this other guy that had bought uh, the cards now the other guy is a pokemon uh, collector he collects pokemon cards so that's what he's interested in but he bought these cards and he sells them to old school mtg and and you know old school gets the cards and everything but he gets the cards to march of the machine aftermath which is an unreleased set of magic cards they're not supposed to be released yet so, 
he does his video as he usually does really nice guy just opens up these cases and shows the cards off and he's doing all that and then um he ends up getting a knock at the door and it's these guys the pinkertons the pinkertons is a detective um well the pinkerton it's a de pinkerton is a detective agency and uh, i guess they have like hired goons so like on the simpsons and so these hired goons show up and they start threatening legal like stuff and you're gonna go to jail and fines and all this stuff and they're just being complete dicks about everything also uh they were being so bad that um they made his wife cry and they're demanding this stuff and they were sent there by wizards of the coast which is owned by hasbro and they were demanding the stolen go goods and everything and so the guy gives him all the stuff. He didn't even keep any of the packaging, nothing. He, he has nothing. So, and the Pinkertons, they give him a, they give him a calling card. And the calling card goes to somebody at Wizards of the Coast who he says that they're being really nice about everything. And, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, we can, we can go ahead and compensate you some and blah, 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 and this and that. Yeah, like all this over a mistake because he says that well you know the names are so similar you know march of the machine and march of the machine aftermath so they must have sent him something wrong from the warehouse and because of their negligence he has to pay for it you know he has to sit there and get harassed by the pinkertons which i don't know why they wouldn't go that far uh, he did do an update, and he said that, um, and he had just found out, and he's like, yeah, I found out a few seconds ago, so now I'm putting this up. He said that before the Pinkertons got to him, that they went to their neighbors, including a 78-year-old little old lady, and was grilling them about where this guy was, because we had a meeting, and this and that, and blah, blah, blah. And they're just harassing the neighbors as well about where is this guy? Where's old school? And he didn't know that they had gone that far. And, you know, they didn't have a meeting. They were they just showed up. Goons. Who? Hired goons. Hired goons? He opens the door. Bam. Hired goons. So he also confirmed that wizards of the coast never got a hold of them to say hey we sent the wrong thing can you please return it or delete your videos or whatever so you know i guess uh hasbro you know since they're teaming up with mattel they must have learned from them from this whole jurassic park thing that happened a year ago where this guy had he obtained these unreleased Jurassic Park toys and he did the video and bam channel taken down or videos taken down or whatever happened but you know it's not these people's faults and you have these major companies who are just they have all the power so you know they're absolute power and they're absolutely corrupt doing this crap and I don't understand why they have to go to these lengths instead of talking to these people which would have been i'm pretty sure that he would have been understanding of everything and it's like hey i took down the videos because of this I, this wasn't supposed to happen whoops and then just move on instead of having to make this huge thing where everyone's talking about it now it's on kotaku it's on youtube it's everywhere everyone's talking about this and making you look bad now because making you look bad not, not even making you look bad you are doing bad things by bringing this kind of stuff on yourself. I don't know, man. I I don't know why they had to bring in hired goons to take back these cards when they could have easily just talked to the guy and everything would have been just fine. It's, it just makes no sense to me. I'm just going to move on from this. This is just, it's really upsetting that these companies that we are, we're all just buying stuff because we like their stuff. And there's just like no quality control 
And now they're sending hired goons to take back stuff for something that they messed up on. And no, we messed up on it, but it's your fault. So we're going to bring hired goons because you're you're resisting, even though you're not resisting. Like, give me a break. I I don't know where this whole toy thing was. You know, I I left video games because it was just getting so toxic and so bad. I come into toys and it's just more of the same. So I don't know where we can bring our hobbies to anymore because it's just it's just bad things in everywhere you go, whether it's gonna be the companies or you have the fanboys where these, you know, big corporations can't do wrong. And speaking of, just something kind of off to the side, something a little fun, but also kind of weird, is um, it's not really any news story or anything, but I just kind of wanted to talk about the like toy collecting because, like, I mean, I've been doing it for a while now. I've done it in San Diego, in a you know big city, with you know ten WalMarts and seven Targets. And they're all really close. They're all like 15 minutes away from each other. And now I'm doing the same thing in a small town in North Carolina. So across the country in a town where there are two Walmarts that are almost 30 minutes away and one Target. Toy collecting is very strange because even though there's stuff that you would notice that um, that are very obvious... For example, when I was in San Diego, I could find so I, I could find my GI Joe classified really easy. It's right there, or I could find it and it would be gone right away. Or I would be in line and it's like, oh, the, these people got the only two beachheads that were there. Time to go to another store right away. And the same group would just kind of convoy over to the next Target, and it's the same story. Oh, those guys got the two, the two beachheads. And by this point, it's like, okay, it's been about 30, 45 minutes, and now I'm going to another Target. I'm hoping these other guys have to go to work because I want this beachhead. And it's just like, it's it's just the same story with everything. You, you can you can find the stuff, or they had the stuff on in stock in a big city like that. That's cool. You know, that, that, that at least it showed up, but it's not cool that not enough showed up. And then meanwhile, out here in North Carolina, what I've noticed is they don't do a lot of the, the bigger event stuff. So like, like Holothon, like NECA's Holothon. I was looking forward to look finding a few pieces here and there. Maybe the, uh, the black and white Usagi, I would have loved to have had that. But we don't get Holothon out here in this small little city or town. So... Nothing for Holothon. So for Masters of the Universe, uh, for uh, Masters of the Universe Origins, we still have Jitsus on the pegs. We still have Buzz-Offs on the pegs. We don't really have any new stuff, whether it's at Target or at Walmart. Especially Walmart. Walmart doesn't change. And then when everything goes on clearance, it's like a dollar or two dollars off. And it's like, well, I'm not going to buy another jitsu or three if it's only a dollar off from the clearance price i mean if these jitsus went down to five bucks seven bucks then okay count me in for another one or two but i'm not gonna do that when it's still 17 dollars or you know 14 dollars i'm just not gonna do it so we get that stuff but what is nice is sometimes we will get stuff that in San Diego I would never see. So I would see something and it's like, this guy is a highly sought out figure. A lot of people want this, this Tiger Force, uh, what's the survival guy's name? But a lot of people want him and here he is. There's three of them right here and no one's picking them up. And, they, and they'll sit there for like three weeks and then they'll be gone. So I don't know if it was somebody that came to visit or what, but that's kind of the state that uh, that I live in when it comes to stuff where it's just like, okay, cool. I've, I'm not into buying this, but that's cool. I actually got to see it in the store. Uh, I'm not sure how things are going these days with the D&D stuff, 
uh, the Hasbro D and D stuff, but they there's a lot of Hasbro D and D stuff here. There, the shelves are just overstocked with that thing, with those things. So there's that. Um, same with like with Lego. It's I've been seeing a lot of people talk about the Indiana Jones stuff, and I want the Indiana Jones stuff. I would love to have that. But out here, let's see. As of as of the recording of this, Indiana Jones was released a week or two ago. For Lego, uh, the the big piece, and we just got it in this week. This week, I finally got to see that big set and the airplane set, but I didn't see the other set, the one that I really wanted, which was the well, the well of souls. So that's kind of disappointing. So there's not even a spot for that out here. When I'm sure that in San Diego, I can go to any of the different stores, and I'll probably end up finding at least two of them not to mention that there's a lego store out there but that's you know i'm not talking about the lego store i'm not talking about anything specialty i'm talking about just target walmart like just the, the regular places that any of the collectors would go not even the comic book shops so so that's kind of that's kind of where i'm at I, I, i'm just you know it's almost like a research thing at this point where it's like how many of these figures can we get uh, same with the Indiana Jones, the, the retro figures. Uh, I've never seen a peg full of all the figures. I have seen a peg full of Marion's, the mechanic guy, and Tot. And then another time I saw two Indies and um, and like four, four be Bellocks. So I've never seen the whole set in the store in one go and uh when i did see marion that was back when they were 14 dollars. so of course i wasn't going to pick up any of that. that those those figures are not worth 14 bucks you know give me the the five dollars back i'll pay the you know the the 9.99 for them you know the ten dollars for them or the nine dollars or whatever yeah no those are worth definitely worth 10 bucks but they are not worth 14 dollars same with the Star Wars ones. So I don't know where they get off charging $15, which, and then five more dollars, I guess $10 now, uh, you can get a six inch, six inch fully articulated figure. So makes no sense to me why, why that is. It's only five points of articulation, guys. And even then, it's like they must be using old figures to make their molds because all the details are so soft. On these figures so I, I don't understand okay so let's round things off in the podcast with some core talk let's talk about the core universe now the core universe is the 2022 and I guess 2023 line of the core that has been MIA it's been really difficult to find I have asked if anybody has picked up any of these vehicles or figures uh some people have picked up the figures and some people have been finding them in places like ollie's and ollie's is a place that well when things go on clearance at a store and the clearance doesn't sell ollie's is the type of store that will buy up all that stuff directly from uh, the store and then sell it themselves. So they have a another chance to get sold again. And usually it's at a discounted price. So some people, like my buddy Jamelin, he has been able to find uh, the Core Universe figure. So that's kind of cool. There's been other people that I've seen that have found them at Ollie's. But usually they're MIA. Usually you'll find the however many pack the the large pack and it's like 50 bucks and that's coming from the store that i saw one of those in australia and it and i did the conversion and yeah it was surely enough it was and about 50 bucks and we just haven't been seeing any of the core items and even as much as we're being told by the heir to the lenard fortune that the core is coming. Don't worry, guys. And all these hype and buzzwords. It's why is everyone asking that they can't get it? Because this wasn't happening back in 2017 
with the core elite or not even with Jurassic Jurassic Rampage or whatever it was called. I can't even remember. I know I did the videos, but I can't even remember the name. And not even on the core on the Lenard Core website doesn't even tell us where to buy them anymore. It used to say on the bottom Walmart, Smiths, and some other place. But now there's just no mention of any store that holds these things. And on top of that, if you do go to walmart.com, you can see that there is the ultimate battle pack or whatever they want to call it. The one that has all the figures in it. And that thing is 50 bucks. Lenard is supposed to be a budget line, a budget toy company. And they would never make that for $50. So let me check real quick. And I believe that the person that's selling it for 50 bucks is going to be somebody that I absolutely despise that sells at Walmart. And that would be Toy Wiz. Toy Wiz is the worst. It's just a scalper that is able to sell at Walmart. So this isn't giving me anything that's being sold by Toy Wiz. But it's there on Walmart.com. <laughs> and then there's uh, more seller options. One. So let's see, the other seller is selling that same set. That set has, let's see, that set has eight figures and two small vehicles for $44.99. And if we compare the sellers, because there's one more on there, it's $73.30. And uh, Com the Duke LLC is the one that's scalping it for that price. The core is not a collectible. The core is supposed to be a toy for children. And, you know, all of us buy them and customize and all this really cool stuff. But, no. No, no more, it looks like. Because I would never pay that much. I would never pay $44 for an 8-pack. The 8-packs, with you know, with the two vehicles and stuff... I believe last time that we saw them, they were going for about $20 to $25. And that's ridiculous that it would double in price. I know some of you might be thinking, well, didn't you say that you'd pay more for the core? Sure, I would pay a little bit more. I wouldn't pay that much more. I wouldn't double the price on these things. I would pay a little bit more if they did proper packaging, individualized packaging, and painted the entire figure. But that's not the case. The case is we're still getting the same thing. And Walmart is selling it for that much. And it's them. It's not even someone else. So we were also told that these vehicles were being sold in other countries. Being tested. And there's some truth to this. Now the way that um, the heir to the, to the Lenard fortune the way that he explains that he makes it seem he doesn't explain it this way but the way he just talks about it because he talks about the core he he absolutely loves the core it makes it seem like the core is being tested out into other markets or whatever and that's how i read into it that's how some other people are reading into it so not making this up the reality is is that these vehicles are probably and, it, and this is a very common thing in the toy world. These vehicles are probably being sold at uh, in other countries under different licenses. So, for example, let's just... I'm just going to make this up. We know that Mattel has Monster Jam. But let's just say that uh, in India, they had Monster Jam there. And they liked the core vehicles that are basically like monster trucks. And they're like, that's cool. I like that. We want to start selling those. But we don't want it to be the core. We want it to be our brand. We want it to be Monster Jam. So then Lennard turns around. Okay, cool. What colors do you want? What this and that? Yeah, give me green and black. And have it say this. Have it say Gravedigger or whatever. And... Sure enough, you'll start. You'll see these vehicles come up as what they call um, they call them private label. So they'll be sold as private level label, 
but you won't see the Lenard logo or anything on there because this is now this now belongs to this this store that has the Monster Jam license or whatever. So they that's how they test them. They don't test the core brand. They test the actual toy itself. So that so we'll see a lot of that and that's why sometimes you'll see something international and it's like what is this oh well it's chap may but there's no nothing on it and it's because it's not chap may it could be lenard that just sold it to another company and they put their branding on it uh something that they do because lenard does a lot of tool type toys and with these tools they would go to upper or not upper deck I was even going to say Upper Decker, but no, not Upper Decker. Um, they would go to um, to Black and Decker, and then they would sell them the toys, and it would be slapped with the, with the Black and Decker logo and everything, and that would be the private label. The private label is Black and Decker, and now they have these tool toys, but they're made by Lenard. But you're not going to see that anywhere on there because it's Black and Decker's toy now. So this is how it's being how it's being sold uh, in other places, and you know sometimes we'll see a lot of people will post in the Facebook page. They'll post, "Hey, found these in Mexico," and it's like Action Force or whatever. So I've seen that. I've seen a lot of posts like that, and that's their brand. But in that case, they decided to keep the figures the same as the core. So you'll see core figures with a different branding on it. And that's just the way it works when it's international. That's how it's being tested. And if they see that, you know, they they sell like like hotcakes, you know, they just go bonkers with this. Then they turn around. And this doesn't always happen. This sometimes they just release it straight up in the US. But if it goes bonkers. Then they bring it to the U.S. and then they put it into their line. So that way it makes the core look better. So they're not selling the core stuff. They're selling these things somewhere else. But what really confuses me is why would it be already on the core website if they don't even know if they're going to even sell it? So that's that's very strange to me. Oh, well, we have to test it. But here you go. This is what might come out. That's very strange for a company to do. Then again, Lenard is a very strange company on its own. So I don't know the answer to that. I guess we'll just have to wait. As for the figures, of course, we've been seeing those at places like Ollie's and all that other stuff. So there's nothing really new there. And uh, I mean, we're into we're already one year into the core universe. What is going to happen here? Time Crisis was also probably the last core set that we would we would see in stores and people would pick up some of the stuff because I sure did pick up pick up a lot of it. I didn't pick up a lot of the items that everybody wanted to get like the Griffin or the Sky Strike. I got those way later after the core uh, Time Crisis was done and over with and now we're in the core universe. So even I guess I should have used the core cyber strike and how nothing came of that nothing came of that nothing came of whispering willy so i am going to be writing to lenard and asking some of these questions and see what's up so next time on the podcast hopefully if they get back to me <laughs> um i'll i'll relay the news to you guys because I don't feel like the news that we've been getting is reliable. And here's the thing. I have already wrote, I've already written to Lenard and I get nothing back. It's just been regular questions. It's been thanking them and not even a uh, you're welcome or anything like that. So, so yeah, so I'll just keep trying to reach out to Lenard and get that news out to you guys. So that was the Ruby Bandit Super Secret Fan Club podcast, episode number two. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys just, you know, it took your mind off of some things or whatever. 
but that's what I'm here to do. I'm just here to entertain or edutain or whatever. So we'll be seeing you in the next one. Thank you.